Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. In an episode where you actually get to see my face, uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in my last episode I wanted to try out some new apps. So while we were looking at some of the movie information, like the Blu-ray DVD sales, it was just easier for me to do it on my phone and record it and try that out. See if you guys like it and maybe I'll present news kind of like that in the future. Uh, I'm trying to get it to where when I turn my screen it actually turns the page. So that way it's, you know, done where it can fill the screen better. Um, but for now, you know, I'm working with what I got. I got to still mess with the settings on my phone, so I'll get it down. But uh, for now, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And on this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to catch up on the comic books because I've been way, way behind. I stopped doing these because I haven't been enjoying the Donny Kate stuff, as you guys know. And this episode is going to be no different. I am going to have a lot of criticism in here, but there are some things that I actually genuinely liked that uh, Donny Kate's put in here. Uh, so for that reason, you know, issue 12, I think, is his last issue for now. And he's going to leave the book for like three months because Venom is going to do, he's going to be part of a crossover with uh, Jason Aaron's War of the Realms uh, Thor storyline. And uh, Venom apparently has an interesting role in that. So we will continue to cover current Venom books because we'll have War of the Realms and Venom will be in that. And then issues 13, 14, and 15, I think, of Venom are going to be written by Colin Bunn with art by Ivan Coelho. And you know I'm a big fan of his. Uh, he just drew a Spider-Man issue that came out today that I, I checked out and talked about in another episode. And it was fantastic. I love his artwork. Uh, so Colin Bunn and him are reuniting. They, they worked on Venomize together um, and Venomverse. So I'm glad they're coming back together to do the War of the Realms tie-in issues. So I will cover those and review those. But then once Donny Cates comes back... I will probably not read the monthly Venom book anymore and cover it on this channel. And I know some of you guys are like, dude, you're the Venom vlog. You got to cover that stuff. I, I will possibly in trade from, from now on. I might get the trades uh, and I might even at that buy it digitally when they go on sale on Comixology because I just am not enjoying it that much to where I, I just don't want to support it with my money, even to do it for the show. Um, so, but you guys can definitely, you know, we can talk on Twitter about it if you want to talk there. Uh, my Twitter and Instagram, I'll put links down below. Maybe I'll still post about it from time to time if I'm still reading them, but I don't think I will because there's another book coming out in May, my birthday month, where they're going to do free comic book day. They're going to do a Venom uh, Spider-Man crossover issue. So I will pick that up for sure. And we'll do a whole thing on free comic book day uh, with that issue. And then uh, possibly, um, you know, or not possibly, but definitely, uh, there's a new Marvel series coming out called The Savage Avengers. And we'll talk more about this at the end of the episode, but it is a team with Punisher, Brother Voodoo, Venom, Conan, Elektra, and Wolverine. And it's written by Jerry Dugan with Mike Diodato Jr. doing the artwork. So chances are I will be reviewing that every month, and that will be my Venom current comic fill for the month. Uh, because, you know, I don't need to cover, you know, multiple Venom books every month, uh, I, if, especially if I'm not liking one. So I like to speak with my wallet. I gave the book 12 issues. I'm going to still pick up issue 12 just to wrap out the first 12 issues here. Um, but uh, but I'm not enjoying the Donny Kate stuff. I know some of you feel differently and some of you still want to talk to me about it. So maybe we will on live streams when I play video game stuff. I'd definitely love to have you over there and talk to me about it there. But on this show, I probably won't cover it too much. Uh, but I will cover the War of the Realms issues that Venom appears in. And we'll cover the Savage Avengers moving forward. So today is, um, you know, I, I still might do a review of issue 12 when it comes out. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about issues 9, 10, 11, and also the Venom Unleashed one-shot. And I'm just going to go very briefly. And as I talk about each one, the digital code is going to pop up on screen. So there's four digital codes we're giving away in this episode. Feel free to take one and save for the others. And let me know in the comments which issue you got. Or if you're, you want to be greedy and you want to get them all, that's fine too, I guess. I can't stop you. But let me know down in the comments which ones you got, which ones you read, and what you thought of it. Because um, that's, you know, the show's not just about my opinion. It's about all of yours too. And let that be known down in the comment section. All right, so Venom number nine. Uh, again, I, I'm really confused a little bit by the storyline. And maybe that's where some of my, di you know, dislike from it comes from. Is because, um, you know, Donny Cates, he says it numerous times. He has this thing where he's like, all right, I have a theme to this story. It's cages. Cages are the theme. Everyone's in a cage in some way. Eddie Brock, in his mind, kind of, you find out in issue 11, he's kind of been caged with memories and false memories in his mind. So we're going to get to that in a second. Uh, but then Donny Cates does things where it's like Eddie Brock is tied to a chair, which, I, you know, you heard me complain about numerous times. And I understood that was part of his theme. I wasn't pointing that out because I thought it was, uh, you know, that I didn't get it, that I didn't get it was part of the theme. I just thought it was such a dumb 
representation of his theme. Uh, oh, it's someone who's caged, so we're going to have, you know, Eddie Brock literally tied to a chair. Uh, all right, he's, you know, he's caged, so he's got to be laying in a bed somewhere. And it's like, and, you know, Null is on Clintar, and he's caged in his thing. And that's what this is all about, is caging uh, ourselves, or caging the beasts within us, or caging, and it's just like, it's a dumb theme. It's a super dumb theme, or at least the way it's executed, it's very uh, dumb to me. So I'm sorry. I'm not going to be as nice as I have been before because this book has piled up enough to where it just aggravates me. Um, I just want a better Venom book. I know a lot of you guys out there do love the book, so I'm you know sorry for the negativity. If you don't agree with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and we can keep talking down there about this. Um, I do love the artwork of the book, and like I said, there are some things that Donny Cates does in here that I do like, but I hate how he'll add new continuity, but at the expense of destroying old continuity. That's my biggest pet peeve. That is what a lazy writer does, in my opinion. A lazy writer will come in and go, all right, here's all the things that have happened before. I know that these have all happened before, but uh, I don't want to deal with any of them. So I'm going to come up with, you know, like a, an amnesia story. I'm going to come up with false memory story. And I can, that literally gives me a, a button that I can press anytime I want whenever I want to address something that happened before. And I want to ignore it and get rid of it completely. And that is my biggest problem because that is such a lazy thing to do. Um, that is, and it's, it's disrespectful, I feel, to the fans who have read Venom comics for 30 years. And I know there's not a ton of us out there uh, that have consistently read the books and the characters' appearances and stuff, but there are a lot of fans out there of different versions of Venom, and I felt like this is a big slap in the face to a lot of people that did like do like the Eddie Brock version of the character, uh, myself included. But I know a lot of people don't agree with me, so it's fine. Uh, I don't know how well the sales are on this book. I think they're dipping. I think he's still in the top 10 every month he comes out. Maybe. I can't remember, but, uh, but I think the numbers are starting to dwindle, which is pretty standard. Uh, but I think with him launching a new, Donnie Keats launching like a big Carnage story and everything like that, especially with the sequel movie, you know, in the works, I have a feeling the sales are going to go back up on this book, um, regardless. So, uh, so to this book, you know, the first issue here, uh, Eddie Brock is kind of leaving. He's heading uh, back to San Francisco on a bus. Uh, I thought that was very Eddie Brock ish because we've seen that in like Carnage Unleashed where he took a bus back to New York City. So I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. He has that. But then the symbiote apparently is supposed to not be like cognizant or aware or not able to speak to they don't really establish it too well they just say like oh it kind of died or got hurt and now it you can't communicate with it but yet it's an it's a living dog it's in the shape of a dog uh for some reason <laughs> and it's and it's aware of itself and it um it growls at people and it, it has an attitude it looks like a venom dog and that's not like throwing anybody off it looks doesn't look like a real dog just straight up looks like an alien um and again okay maybe you just buy into that kind of stuff and that's fine i like this uh this was a reference to zeb wells and uh paco medina who did um the uh, Dark Origin storyline, the Venom Dark Origin storyline. The problem is, is I also feel like this is a little bit of a slap in the face to them because it's like, hey, I know what you guys did. I know the run you did, but we're going to retcon everything you did in that run. And that's really frustrating. And I felt like a little disrespectful. I know they didn't mean it that way, but it just kind of a little bit comes across that way. Uh, this thing that they added in Eddie Brock's past where he was a drunk driver and he hit a young kid. I don't mind that. It's, it's a, it's, in, it's consistent with the type of character Eddie Brock is. Someone who makes horrible, horrible mistakes and is trying to do the right thing. Um, it de to me, it, it, it definitely makes it hard to redeem the character in some ways. Uh, but that is what Eddie Brock, that's his never-ending battle. Most heroes or anti-heroes have this never-ending battle. Like Punisher probably will never eradicate crime altogether. Neither will Batman probably. Uh, Superman has the same never-ending battle of never fully, you know, realizing his dream, at least while he's alive, um, you know, to have like, like a peace, a more peaceful world. So these are called the never-ending battles, and a lot of characters have them. Uh, Eddie Brock's is, the never-ending battle for him is always trying to get redeemed and, and something new coming out to show that it's harder for him to get redeemed. Uh, so I don't mind that so much. I don't mind the addition of that, but I hate that it had to come at the cost of the symbiote creating false memories and erasing Mary, you know, Eddie Brock's sister. She's no longer a character in the book uh, or in existence. She never existed, apparently. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but then we also have a new addition to uh, Eddie Brock's family. So Eddie Brock comes back home, talks to his dad. Uh, his dad screams at him, even hits him in the face. And that causes the symbiote to react and try to attack Eddie Brock's dad. And again, I'm like, wait, I thought this thing couldn't communicate. I, so they weren't really clear on that. And then in the next issue, boom, 
it's you know it's kind of a living thing again and it's even wrapping itself around eddie brock it's not even in dog form but it wraps itself around eddie and he's like you know trying to get away and then meanwhile he has these flashbacks a car is coming at him just like that flashback scene he had about a little boy getting hit by the car and at first you're kind of meant to believe that he was the kid who got hit by the car but you find out later that he was the actual one who was driving and he was drunk and he was young and, and it was a stupid accident he did and it, i think he killed the kid i can't remember fully uh, i think he did i don't know if they touched on that too much but eddie at the end of the book he's sitting in the alley he's coughing up blood again looks like his cancer is back which also doesn't make any sense his cancer was literally cured by um by uh, martin lee the mr negative we talked about that when we did the venom storyline the six ways to die and um with the crossover with the thunderbolts and um it's I don't know I don't, I'm not buying this this storyline where Eddie's c cancer has come back or seemingly has I mean that's something else that they mentioned was that it's it could be something the suit's doing to him uh, to make it look like his cancer's coming back so that Eddie will feel the need to continue to want the suit so to me you know I'm not really digging that I mean Martin Lee clearly cured Eddie Brock from his cancer when he touched him but again like I said they they kind of mentioned that it could be something the suit's doing. Uh, the suit apparently is so desperate for Eddie Brock to stay on him this time that it has it's revealing all these things that it's done to Eddie over the years, including manipulating him on a massive scale. And it's on a scale that I'm I'm not really buying as a long term fan of this series and of this character and someone who's been re-exploring the character for the past year and a half on this show and going through and reading the old comics and stuff. This feels way out of character, way out of left field from the symbiote, doesn't feel accurate at all. And it feels like Donnie Cage just being driven more again by that that ego you know side of you when you write uh, and and being like I'm gonna just do my thing and I and, and I can respect that on some level of like hey I want to put my stamp on the character but to literally erase history of the character and this may not be the final thing we may find out that the suit is being manipulated in some way by Null or you know the the memories the false memories were real memories and the suit is confused or something we could find all that out but the way it was written in these issues made it seem like that the symbiote has been double crossing Eddie Brock and really screwing him over for many many years and then I also wonder well what happens when Eddie when it left Eddie um, and Eddie was just sick and he you know he had he became anti-venom and he didn't have the the true symbiote anymore like how was his how did his mind not become more clear how did he not uh you know remember that he didn't have a sister you know it's like it's all these things that you're just like the more it's one of those ideas where the more you think about it the more you can poke holes into it and uh and i but that's where i'm kind of like railing against it i know new fans who don't know about all this history or maybe know it on a surface level they're not really caring they're just enjoying the story and that's fine at the end of the day that's the point of a lot of these books but for me i need more than just to enjoy it when it comes to a character that i literally dedicate a whole entire show to so obviously my perspective on it is going to be very different from people's because i feel way more invested because i wake up every day for a while there we did like 14 venom vlogs in one week so literally every day you know i wake up and i think about venom i look at what he's doing in the comics and what movie news is out there and everything you know it's like i'm constantly thinking about the character so uh so i have a different pr perspective of it so obviously with your perspective i'd love to hear down below what you think uh but then they did this venom uh unleashed one shot i really didn't like this book either although kyle hotz's artwork was great but the problem was is i feel like this is what happens with brian stegman i feel like donny cates has like mediocre scripts for a great artist like hey we're gonna have venom sit in a chair because that's the theme is that he's in a cage so eddie brock's gonna sit in a chair for four or five pages and it's like if i was writing a book where ryan stegman was the artist i would not waste his talent on someone sitting in a chair for four pages it, it just didn't work for me seems like a waste of a talented artist um you know it's uh if you, you find an artist if you're working with an artist who's not as strong and they're developing their skills on a book uh, and then you do like close-ups of faces like when they're sitting in a chair to do a dialogue scene or something like that or an interrogation scene that seems to make more sense to me but when you're working with like a pro uh it, you know to me it, it doesn't make sense to me so uh so again i'm looking at this from different ways even from an editor standpoint um i, I would have I don't know i would have said something if i was the editor i'd have been like we got to do something different on this page not to manipulate the story too much or change it that's not an editor's role or job obviously but uh but i just would have guided them a little bit in a different direction with the scripts um but the artwork is pretty cool in this one and this one's all about the symbiote dog being fully cognizant fully aware of what it's doing and it's going around and hunting uh it's going to the underground city from uh, lethal protector um so that was cool to revisit that uh, ryan segment i thought that was a cool idea to go back to that so uh, again ryan segment the artist 
wrote this issue and Kyle Hotz drew it along with someone else. Actually, there was a second artist. I love the Stan Lee thing, by the way. They put these in like a couple of the issues. Uh, the tribute to Stan Lee was really well done, actually. Um, Juan Gideon. So he's also an artist in this and his art's in the back of the book. And I actually liked it a lot. Uh, so you'll see that in a minute. But uh, yeah, we're in the underground city. You're seeing the homeless people Eddie Brock once protected and they're all being taken over by Carnage and this big, you know, thing that he created uh, that is creating these worms that, um, from Null that are, you know, creating an, an army for him and stuff. And all this just feels like way out of character, even for Carnage. Like, I don't know. And he's like hunting for the codexes. He wants to find everyone who's ever had the symbiote bond with them, even temporarily. And he wants to get those codexes back to make him stronger and build his connection to Null a lot easier. And again, I just, I don't know. I, I don't see this working out into something I like. A Carnage doesn't need a master. It's like having, it's like Megatron in the second Transformer movie where he listened to this guy called The Fallen. I'm like, Megatron serves no one. <laughs> like, even when he turned into Galvatron in the old 86 movie, the animated movie, he looked at, uh, you know, Unicron. He's like, screw you, I don't serve you. And only when Unicron beat him down did he was like, okay. But we're not having that effect here. Null's not beating down Carnage. Carnage is willingly doing whatever he says. And I don't know why. I don't get it. I, I don't get it at all. Um, so, but yeah, the book is, I don't know, this book was kind of bland to me, uh, but the artwork in the back here uh, by Juan, I think this is Juan's art, is amazing. It's way more detailed, uh, way crazier looking, and it gives you a little teaser at like, you know, Carnage's plan and his connection to Null and what he wants to do. And then there's, he's like sending out more homeless people that Eddie Brock might know to go after him. And it's like, ah, that doesn't pay off yet. That'll probably pay off later on in the next, you know, couple issues or when Donny Cates comes back with his big Carnage story. Um, but for now, you know, issue nine ended with Eddie Brock, uh, this kid, uh, his younger brother, apparently, Dylan, shows up. He has a black eye and he says, hey, my, you know, our dad beats us, uh, beats me. And so I want you to kill our dad. And, and Eddie's like, I'm not going to kill our dad. Uh, I need to hear more fr from you. You know, I don't know who you are, kid. Uh, he's trying to, like, assess the situation, which I was like, okay, I can appreciate that. You know, he's not just believing everything he says uh, that this kid says to him. But he's starting to buy into it. And he understands that, uh, that what his dad was like. And he has these flashbacks again. He tells Dylan the story about how he hit a kid. And, uh, you know, that Eddie was the drunk driver and he hit this kid. Um, and, uh, and then what happened was... Uh, you know, basically Carl, you know, Eddie Brock's father shows up, talks to the police and talks to Eddie, pulls some strings and he's able to uh, get Eddie um, out of this. He, he even hits him and beats it into him saying, you're going to tell the jury you're innocent and we're going to clear you through, uh, you know, some pulls that I'm making because I don't want people in this town to think I'm a bad person. And this will reflect negatively on me and blah, blah, blah. And I have an image to uphold or whatever. And he's going to use his connections uh, with government officials and cops to, uh, to make Eddie look innocent from this crime. And so Eddie, this I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. I kind of dug that because again, Eddie does have a broken compass when it comes to what innocent is and what isn't and who he protects and who he doesn't. And, uh, and again, all those add on to, all right, this could work. This works for the character. But again, but why take away at the same time? Why add all this stuff that is fairly interesting and, and compelling, uh, but then retcon everything you don't like or don't want to deal with or don't want to write? And again, that to me shows the laziness in Donny Cates where he's like, oh, I'll come up with a good idea, but it's going to kind of contradict old things. So we better just make up a, a way to get rid of all those old things. And, uh, and I hate that. And he came up with the laziest way possible, which is like a amnesia, fake memory kind of thing. Um, that to me, like, it's like the Resident Evil movies where it's like six movies and you know nothing about Alice until the sixth movie. And you just find out she's a clone of like the head of umbrella or, you know, the movie version. And it's like, we waited six movies for that, and like it, she never knew who she was, where she came from. And then in the fourth, third, or fourth movie, they gave Claire Redfield amnesia. So when she ran into her brother, she didn't even know it was her brother. And it's just like it, it's a bad trope used by, in my opinion, people who are phoning it in, and and uh, who have talent probably, but are just not using it. So uh, so to me, I'm not digging this at all. Uh, I know this is a very negative episode. I apologize. It's a long negative episode, uh, but I am trying to point out the things I do like outside the artwork because the artwork on all these books are very amazing. Ryan Stegman's great. Kyle Hotz and Juan did a great job too. Um, but in this one, Eddie Brock is now puking in the alley again, and he's, uh, you know, basically his cancer has returned, or so it seems, and so the maker has shown up to grab him and is injecting needles in him, but the suit, once again, fully cognizant and aware of what it's doing, wraps itself around Eddie to protect him.
And now we have the last issue, issue 11. This is the most recent one. I think issue 12 comes out like in a week or two. Um, so we'll probably cover it at some point. I probably won't cover it the day it comes out, but we'll get to it at some point for sure. Um, but again, great artwork. Uh, this is actually a different artist, though. Uh, I think Ryan Stegman does eight pages in here. Um, but yeah, Joshua Kassara um, does some artwork in here, and it's really, really good. I actually liked his style a lot. Uh, but it starts off with Eddie. He's now in like this coma type thing where he's in the maker's room being injected, you know, being operated on. But the maker can't get through to Eddie fully because the suit keeps like, you know, pushing away the needles or, or you're know, fighting it off. And uh, and it's protecting Eddie because it doesn't want Eddie to know some truth that it's been hiding from him. Now, granted, the suit has done this before. It's lied to Eddie about, you know, being pregnant. Um, it's lied to Eddie about, uh, you know, various different things, uh, the truth of why it was banished from Clintar back in the Planet of the Symbiotes. It's definitely hidden things from him. It's hidden things from Peter Parker, but it has not manipulated on this level uh, to where it would alter memories and all this other stuff. And it, it drives me nuts because it just feels like a lazy writing tactic where, you know, Donny Cates is like, I need the suit to do this so that I can have this result so that I can, uh, you know, basically do what I want with the story and retcon anything I want. And that's lazy in my opinion and it's frustrating because i've seen donny kate's other stuff is great the cosmic ghost rider stuff that he's done uh, the thanos storyline even that doctor strange story he did was pretty good um but all he did in that one was just make you know turned everyone into a ghost rider it's like he has like this like these two ideas he's either going to turn someone who isn't a ghost rider into a ghost rider or he's going to retcon their whole backstory <laughs> and it's like that's just seems like what his thing is even at the end of that thanos story the whole story is retconned by the ending of it because Thanos goes back and changes his ways and to a certain extent and prevents the whole story from even happening. So I don't know. It, it, to me, I'm just like, I'm, I'm kind of, I want to see Donny Cates write something really amazing. Um, and hopefully he does it with the Marvel Knight stuff. I got to get back into that. Uh, but the, the Venom stuff, I'm definitely dropping because of all this, because I feel like he's adding some interesting things, but at the detriment of all this great continuity that was there before just because he doesn't feel like dealing with it. So you have Mary show up in the book and she's like, you know, talking to Eddie and, and, you know, he shows Eddie this uncle that he had at one point and apparently the uncle died of cancer and then Mary died of cancer. Turns out none of this happened. Eddie Brock never had an uncle. He never had a sister named Mary. All this I find to be really frustrating as a long-term fan. It feels like I've read comics for 30 years and it didn't really matter because some young writer comes in and he's just like, oh, none of that was real. And because I want to tell my story the way I want to tell it, um, I don't care that you were that invested in all this stuff. And it's not like we had a ton of Eddie's sister, but what we got in Dark Origin was a very clear character that it made sense Eddie grew up the way he grew up because she she would blame him for Eddie's mom's death because Eddie's mom died giving birth to him and she and his sister would torment him about that um, and give him a hard time and she wasn't very loving and so in this book they're like oh you made me believe I had a sister that I loved I'm like I don't remember the relationship being a good relationship that's why Eddie is a broken grown-up so if she never existed in the first place how is he a broken grown up? <laughs> like it's, you know, uh, you know, or what other, I guess, because the car accident thing, I guess, but that's what I'm saying. He's adding these things and taking away what was there before, but what was there before worked uh, for the most part for, and I know some people didn't like dark origin, but that stuff worked from a character standpoint. So it's frustrating. It's frustrating to read these and just to see some, you know, new lazy writer come in and just clean house like this. It's not fun for me to, uh, I can't enjoy the book for that reason. And that's why. Um, so yeah, so you have, go, they go back, they talk about Eddie in the church, why he was going to kill himself. He had cancer, you know, he's trying to take, you know, take his, take that away from himself. Uh, but then the, it's like the suit maybe false, falsified that, falsified his life, falsified his memories. And it's just like, ah, uh. so now anytime Donny Cates gets into a corner where he's like, oh, something new I'm doing is going to contradict something old that's happened. And if someone blasts him for it, you know, like, which I don't want to, don't attack this guy, obviously. He's doing what he, he's doing and he's doing the best he, uh, he's doing it the best way he knows how to do it. So that's fine. I just don't agree with it, but that's fine. I'm glad he's, you know, making Venom a top selling book. As a fan, that's all I really care about. If it's not for me, that's fine. I'll have other Venom stories. Plenty more coming out. Savage Avengers, War of Realms. I'll have plenty of versions of Venom to talk about. Um, but in this one, it is kind of frustrating because this is the core book that is dealing with the continuity 
and it's uh, it's getting rid of a lot of it and uh, it's it's a bummer it's uh it's i wasn't ready to say goodbye to a lot of this stuff and i wasn't ready to face that it none of it could have been real and the the you know the the suit there's this whole explanation page where the suit says i didn't want you to leave me and eddie's like but you lied to me i thought you loved me and it's like i do love you but i i needed you to stay and the only way i could get you to stay is if you felt like you really needed me for something but uh, so i'm providing these memories for you to to get, make your life look a little bit better a little bit more fulfilled but it's like but Eddie didn't have a fulfilling life. He didn't have a good life before. He had a crappy life. So you, you gave him a sister that hated him. Uh, why would you do that? You know, and it wanted to drive, it, I guess in a way, it wanted to make Eddie feel exiled so that it would just fully bond with the suit and just stay with the suit. But then in here they say, oh, but he loved his sister. And it's like, well, I'm sure he loved her because she's a sister, but she tormented him. <laughs> and the few times we saw her... She tormented him in Dark Origin. And I know she made a couple appearances in other books, like once or twice, but she tormented him. She was a, she's a big reason why he's a broken person, and his dad is also a big reason why he's a broken person. And adding the car accident makes sense to me because it, uh, it furthers the dad's point of view and his like you know way of trying to raise his son and it showing how he broke Eddie in certain ways uh, with the innocence thing uh, but then also you know but they're taking away so much so it's it's really bad and I, I'm not liking it at all so uh, at the end here Eddie you know stands up and he's like what were you trying to hide from me what was the biggest thing you were trying to hide from me the most um, tell me just tell me now and he's like I don't want to the suit's like I don't want to because I'll lose you you'll you'll leave me and Eddie's like, just tell me. And he's like, because of Dylan. And Eddie's like, Dylan, my little brother? He's like, all right, so I have a little brother like that I didn't know about. And he's like, I, I guess so. And the suit's like, no, he's not your little brother. And that's when Eddie snaps out of it. He wakes up. He tells the maker, you got to let me out of here. You got to let me out of here. Uh, there's something up with Dylan. He's not my brother, it turns out. Uh, it looks like Dylan is actually my son. And it looks like maybe Eddie's dad shows up to hit him again. Um, so Eddie wants to go save him. So it looks like Eddie Brock has a son. And for me, I like that. I don't like the manipulation part. Uh, and I don't think you needed that manipulation to reveal Eddie Brock had a son. You didn't need that at all. Eddie could have been completely oblivious and the suit could have been completely oblivious to um, Anne Wang after she divorced Eddie of going off and having a kid on her own and then giving the kid up for adoption or something. And then maybe uh, Eddie's dad, you know, finding this out and going and, and, uh, and getting the kid, you know, at some point and, um, you know, and claiming ownership of the kid because he didn't, he knew Eddie couldn't do it. The, you could have had humans keeping secrets from Eddie and you didn't have to do it with this, uh, this symbiote manipulating his memories. So for me, I, I don't like this book. I think you could have done all this stuff in a more clever way, or at least a, a less, um, retcon -y way. And uh, I don't think you had to lose any of Eddie Brock's past to add the new stuff that's in here. And for that reason, I am not a fan of these books or what Donnie Cates is doing. But again, it's just my opinion. I want to hear what you think, especially those of you who got those digital codes. If you did, let me know down below what you thought of these books as you read them. I appreciate you hanging out with me for about 30 minutes talking about all these issues. But I definitely wanted to play catch up and I wanted to give you guys a nice long episode uh, since I haven't done one in a while. And we'll get back to more movie news and more other things very soon. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about again, War of the Realms. We have issues three and four coming out. It looks like Malekith is going to have Venom on a chain and using him for his own you know, deeds or whatever he wants. Uh, but then I guess Venom breaks out of that and he's going to join a team called the War Avengers in a Strike Force spinoff book from War of the Realms. So I'm going to be picking up this book since Venom is going to be in it. And I will pick up the six issues of War of the Realms to see how Venom plays out in that. And then also in May, along with those issues, we have Savage Avengers number one. So in May, plenty of Venom comic book stuff. I'm telling you, I don't really need to cover the Venom monthly books at all. Uh, the, the main series by Donny Cates. After the War Realm stuff, we are going to drop that book completely from our pull list. And we are going to go and just pick up Savage Avengers and review that every month. Uh, but maybe when the trades come out from issue 13 onward, whenever those come out in trades, especially if they're on sale on Comixology, I'll pick them up and we'll talk about them at those times. But I just won't talk about them right when they come out because there's going to be more movie news and other things coming out soon for Venom 2 and other things Venom related. I'll have plenty to talk about and I, honestly I'm not going to miss my, talking about this book at all uh, because I don't really like being overly ne negative. 
Um, I do like being critical of things, but I feel like I'm critical and negative when it comes to this stuff. And I, that's just not what I want to be like on this uh, channel, especially when it comes to Venom. I want to talk about things I like about Venom and not the things that I'm not liking. Uh, but if you have different opinions, as always, I invite to hear them. So let me know in the comments below. And maybe over time, if I get enough comments, we'll make a video where I read your opinions on the Venom run and read your reviews on them. So if you want to leave those in the comments down below, feel free to, and then we'll cover that in future episodes. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.